Hi everyone, this is Mary Jane Feng Shui Yoga Girl and today I'm here at Franklin Park once again and I want to talk about uh, some of the elements in five element theory. I think it's a really great way to learn the cycles of the elements when you're actually outside in nature. So right here I'm zooming in on tree roots. Okay, so if you can see from this tree here, and I'm just going to ride up here so you can see this tree. All right, so this tree represents wood energy. Wood energy, vitality, and growth. It's a columnar shape, so if you, you know, take a look here at the whole trunk of the tree, it's a column-like shape. So when we think about design, then columnar shape bodes really well. And in terms of colors, we think about all of the hues of greens. And so just think about your, your leaves, your foliage that are coming off the branches of your tree or wood energy. Okay, now, if we look at this root system where I started off with right here, do you see how it's uprooting the soil of the earth? In other words, it's pulling up. And so in five element theory, the element of wood and the element of earth are in what we call a co-relationship or a destructive relationship. And so the reason that this occurs is because wood energy, uh, if you were to look at its nuclear strand, there's a very much of a linear and uh, an upward and outward kind of flowing of chi. And so if we look at the element of earth, the way that nuclear strand works, it's, it's very rotational, okay? Just think about our planet on its axis and rotating. So when we combine this upward and outward energy of wood and try and stick it in the rotational energy of earth, it just doesn't happen. A lot of stress occurs. This is this uprooting, if you will. And so let's bring this into a scenario uh, inside your living space in terms of decor. So if we were designing a room that uh, was in either the Northeast or the Southwest or even the central or center uh, part of the home, okay? It is very much an earth energy for those directions. And if we were to infuse a lot of wood energy in those rooms, so if we were to take the palette of greens on the wall or bringing in actual wood furnishings or a lot of columnar, maybe a striped pattern in our pillows uh, or throw or anything like that, or maybe a lot of landscape scenes, what we would be effectively doing is creating this co-cycle. We would be creating this uprooting type of energy. And so what that's going to do on a very basic level, it's going to create obstacles and challenges just a little bit more difficult when it comes to relationships, whether they are romantic relationships in the Southwest or just overall relationships with friends. Uh, it's going to create somewhat of a challenge. Northeast, it's going to create a challenge with our inner knowledge or our ability to tap within. Our meditations are going to be more of a struggle. Um, our didactic learning can be a little bit more of a struggle. And so what we would want to do then, if you know the client was totally opposed to changing wall color, which of course would be the best scenario because walls take up a great deal of square footage, we would want to infuse the bridging element to um, release or uh, the stress that's creating this war between the wood and the earth. So the element of fire is what's going to bridge through. So we would want to start bringing in some fire accents, some fire qualities okay uh, bringing in some hues of reds and burgundies even purples um, triads in terms of your uh, objects that you are creating um, uh, candles uh, images of animals or people leather accents all those things will help then to bring in that bridging element so we can bring then a flow restore flow create space in the rotational movement of the earth 
for the expanding wood energy. So as we um, talk a little bit further about some of the elements, I just want to take a little bit of a walk over to this area here that is um, right against the line of the lake. And so what we have here then is a Shang cycle. We have the element of water that is just kind of flowing right in through here. And it is feeding this beautiful wood, the plants here that are actually just feeding off and nourishing from this water energy. So you can actually see there's a flow. There's no struggle going on here. There's acceptance here. So in a room that sits in the east or the southeast, the very wood energy, it's wonderful to have flowing water energy. So the drapery can be very flowing and puddling to the ground. We can have images of artwork that have water scenes in it. We can actually have um, uh, virtual, other virtual water like seashells or starfish, um, sand, you know, you can create uh, a beautiful little terrarium with a glass uh, container which represents water, put some sand in it and then go ahead and put some succulents in it for the wood energy. We can actually have moving water, a water fountain or a fishbowl. But can you see the dynamic here where we have a shang cycle, the water just kind of flowing right into this wood energy. It's very peaceful. Whereas in our prior discussion when I was showing you the uh, roots of the tree uprooting the soil of the earth, it, there was that struggle, there was that war. It looked very harsh, okay? So we'll just talk about um, these two elements for today in terms of showing the Shang cycle water fueling that wood and then the co cycle that we discussed here of having the um, rooting, the uprooting, if you will. Here is actually another way you can see that this tree was actually cut down, but you can see all of this uprooting here going right through the soil of the earth. So knowing that when you're dealing with this closed cycle of wood to earth, you want fire to bridge it out, okay, to release the stress. And that's going to bode very well. So just remember that your five element theory is extremely powerful when you uh, take into consideration your design in your home. And then of course, it's gonna have a tremendous impact in your own life. So uh, this area that we talked about, the water flowing in, to uh, the wood area, and I looked at east and southeast, we're looking at, you know, the family, the heritage in the east, you know, your elders, uh, and then flowing into southeast, we're talking about uh, our fortunate blessings here. A lot of people want to call that wealth, all right, but it's really whatever you consider a fortunate blessing to be, okay? And so there'll be a tremendous impact. And it's gonna impact us on so many levels, even personally, different members of the family are gonna be impacted, different body organ systems will be impacted. And even in terms of the energy that you display uh, in your own moods and attitudes, you know, when you have the water and the wood flowing beautifully, it's a very strong, flowing and up uh, upward kind of energy that's happening. Uh, there's a lot of vitality. And so you, you feel kind of bouncing in your step here. It feels really good. So let's, let's sign off with that for today. Maybe just working on those uh, uh, areas of water fueling wood and then looking at a destructive cycle of uh, wood uprooting the earth. This is Mary Jane Kasliner, www.fengshuiyogaNJ.com.